So what does the future hold for Keras, TensorFlow, and PyTorch? Where are these frameworks going over the next three to five years? Well, there was a presentation, two presentations, at GTC 2021. So it's 2021, so yeah, I am going to GTC at home in my office. I hope to go to actual conferences again someday in the future, but such is, such is the world of the pandemic. And thank you, NVIDIA, for the, the cool swag related to GTC 2021. In this video, I am going to talk about a presentation given by pretty much the core guy of Keras, who is Francois Chalet, and one of the core guys of PyTorch, who is Somoth Chintella. I'm going to cover some of the highlights from both of their two presentations and kind of synthesize that into a general direction of where are these two frameworks going over the next three to five years. Yeah, I'm going to take this beanie off. I've got the GPU behind me training GANs. Yeah, it's not a good combination. And I'm not trying to make this out to be some clash of the titans of TensorFlow, Keras versus PyTorch. However, the field, there used to be a lot of machine learning libraries out there, and there still are. But you have to admit, this is really narrowed down to two. And I realize I'm centering on Python. I mean, is R still a thing? I, I guess it is. But Python definitely seems to be the, the core area where we have deep learning. I would say also JavaScript, particularly for on the edge. So why are Keras and PyTorch the last two standing, or at least close, the last two with, with large support I mean, I don't frequently, at least on this channel, get requests of, Jeff, do more MXNet or do more DL4J. It's PyTorch and it is TensorFlow. So why these two? And Somuth, I thought, gave a really good description of why these two were so successful. It's because they created the concept of you configure the model through code, whereas many of the earlier deep learning frameworks, you configured the model through configuration and other ancillary files. So this really gave the researcher, the practitioner, complete control over what they're doing. However, it confounds often the ML ops people who have to put this into a production pipeline. And indeed, this is where Samuth said that PyTorch is going in the future, is still keeping what he calls the modeler or the person who is designing the model through code at the center of this equation, but making it easier for other people in this machine learning pipeline. What Both engineers talked very much about the need to eliminate silos in the data science pipeline, the machine learning pipeline. They labeled the silos somewhat differently and both had three. On the Kira side with Francois, you had essentially researchers, data scientists, and engineers. So the data scientists are sort of at the center of the, of the picture. They're the ones creating the models, tuning them, Researchers are coming up with the newer technologies, the newer model types, and engineers are the people who have to make the whole thing work at the end. And dealing with how can we keep these together. And I don't think there's any intention that the data scientist and the engineer silos were closer. Maybe, although maybe it is. Maybe the researchers are a bit further removed from the, the real day-to-day -day in, in industry. On the PyTorch side, Samut had what he called three ML personas. These were a little more, a little more alien to me in terms of compiler. I think that, that is a, a as the low level thing that translates something into a lower level language. But compiler, what he meant by it, at least as I understood, is sort of the optimizer who is really looking at making the pipeline work well since it's gone into production, put in by the prod 
individual. And the modeler is very much what Francois called the data scientist, who is the person who is building the core machine learning model that's at the center of the whole thing. Both libraries, both frameworks seem to be going very much in the direction of trying to smooth this entire process. And considerable time was given by Smut talking about trying to really get the, the API surface, the amount of functions that you have to deal with, down to a reasonable minimum. On the Kira side, Francois talked about the Kira's API philosophy, where basically you get progressively more complex. You evolve from a baby unicorn up to a full-blown unicorn that, that could fight off mythological beasts of its own. And that is... And this fits into how it's designed. You have model fit at the most basic level where you just call model fit, it fits it. You can add callbacks to Keras to get increasing complexity. You can override the train step on the model class. So if you're creating a model, you can provide model specific training in that model class. And some of the examples on this channel, we've used the gradient tape where you're basically letting Kira's optimize parts of your, your parameters to allow it to really fit the model and other, other parts of your model to the actual problem. The four areas that Francois was particularly interested in extending Keras into the future are ecosystems of reusable parts, very much transfer learning, increasing automation where you're able to, to do your typical hyperparameter tuning and other things. Indeed, there's a, a tuner module in Keras now to handle this and also auto Keras. Larger scale workflows in the cloud. We'll talk about that one in a second and deployment. You've got to get the models out the door and accessible if they're going to really do anything for you. The cloud deployment I found, or not deployment, but actual training and fitting, I found this fascinating that they want to basically bring cloud usage frontline into Keras. So it's not just a lift and shift, throw something up to the cloud, you're going to actually run the code like you see here and present it to the cloud. And that's all orchestrated through Keras. Looking at some of the points brought up on Samut's side with PyTorch, it was interesting talking about is the modeler, the data scientist, the machine learning person going to remain the centerpiece of this whole equation over and above some of the more DevOps sort of parts of the pipeline. And he brought up some very interesting future scenarios. What we've got right now is literally every three years, a completely new disruptive architecture emerges. Things like ResNets, uh, Transformers, huge. Displacing other things before them like pure convolution nets and LSTMs. I mean, think about if some startup had, who knows, startups do everything. May if you created this hardware piece that basically took LSTM down into the hardware, you you would have probably been out of business just as you had gotten that hardware back from your manufacturer. Because things like transformers have now taken center stage. So given the fact that this disruptive technology is flowing into this so rapidly, he looked at really three different scenarios. The one that I found the most interesting was what if we reach a point where the, the current kings of the hill, transformers and convolution nets, become a stable architecture. You're going to then see many hardware accelerators begin to develop for those. So things more specific than the current GPUs and TPUs that we have that really focus on that particular hardware. Perhaps FPGAs might have some capability in this area, but even more specific hardwired architectures to actually take care of that. You can also, some of his other events talked into just a complete disruptive technology that just takes out the whole low level and causes complete redesign. 
quantum computing really comes to to mind potentially there. So if you want to help my channel out, please give me a like or subscribe to my channel or, or both. Thank you for watching this video and be sure to check out some of the other things on GTC 2021. This conference is entirely free this year and lots of great things on deep learning and artificial intelligence. And if you want to follow all things AI, machine learning, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.